We often connect with those who have a similar personality to us or who share our interests. But even if you have a lot in common with a person, being at different income levels or having one person have more disposable income than the other might complicate things. And it can be tough if you're the friend with a tighter budget and you can't always afford to do the same activities as your friend. So today we're looking at a few do's and don'ts on how to navigate these types of relationships. So the first thing to remember when your friends have more money than you is don't go into debt. Nowadays, social comparisons is unfortunately common. And with social media, you might constantly see images of friends, family, or acquaintances living a seemingly dream life. They might take frequent vacations, wear designer clothes, or they might eat out several times a week. So at times, you could feel pressure to keep up, especially when your friends appear to have the financial means to do whatever they want. According to one survey, a good percentage of millennials admitted to going into debt just to keep up with their friends. And out of those who did, about 73% kept it a secret. But something that's even more interesting is that of all the respondents, about 27% said that they felt uncomfortable saying no whenever a friend suggested an activity that they couldn't afford. So this is a problem. Even if using a credit card to keep up makes you feel good about yourself or feel that you're part of the group, you have to remember that this feeling is just an illusion and it's not likely to end well. Having a lifestyle that's well above your means can create a domino effect of bad decisions. And once you're in the hole, it can take years to dig yourself out. And this all starts with a desire to fit in. And in the beginning, it might be small things, but if you're not careful, it can completely spiral out of control where you start doing the most insane things with your money, such as financing an expensive car that you really can't afford or moving into a luxury apartment that stretches your budget too thin, all because you want to appear as if you're on the same income level. But one thing you have to remember, and this is something that I feel that a lot of people don't really take into consideration consideration is that if things were to get out of hand, you're the one who has to deal with the repercussions, not them. Also, it might help to be honest without giving too many details. We don't always see a lot of transparency when it comes to money. Some people still prefer to be hush hush about this topic. However, opening up can actually be a good thing. Now that does not mean that you should start divulging every detail of your financial life to your friends. When it comes to your savings, your debt, your income, those are personal matters. So you have every right to keep those details private. But what you could do instead is focus on the broader picture. For instance, if you're invited somewhere or if there's an activity you can't afford at the moment, you can say something like, I've been working on a budget this year and I'm aiming to be more mindful of my spending. This is a simple way to communicate your commitment to being financially responsible without getting too specific about your income. And being open about your budget can have several advantages. For example, you're able to take responsibility for your financial well-being, which can boost your confidence and strengthen your discipline. Additionally, it might also serve as a reality check for your friends. Sometimes when a person is financially comfortable, they might forget about the constraints that others face. Plus, your commitment to mindful spending might have a positive influence on your friends. It could encourage them to be more conscientious of their own spending habits, even if they have more financial flexibility. Another thing that can help when hanging out with friends who have more money is to embrace the joy of missing out. And this is really a refreshing perspective, especially in a world that tends to glorify excessive spending and overconsumption. And it basically encourages you to find contentment in the things that you choose not to do, especially if those things push you over budget. And the benefit is that you learn how to stop chasing after every experience or material possession, and you learn how to focus on what truly matters to you. And one simple, simple way to really embrace the joy of missing out is to stop viewing no as a negative action. Instead, think of it as saying yes to your goals, whether it's saving a down payment for a house, saving for a dream vacation, or becoming debt free. And at first this may seem really minor and small, and you might even question whether it will actually work, but I promise you, the more you do it, the more empowered you will feel because what you're doing is putting your financial future first and you're learning how to make conscious decisions that prioritize your goals over impulse spending. Also, you should stop viewing their generosity as charity. And one challenge that some people might face when a friend earns more, especially if it's significantly more, is accepting gestures of generosity without feeling uncomfortable or indebted. 
For example, your friend might periodically offer to pay for dinner, concert tickets, or another activity, and even though there's no expectation of repayment, you might feel weird accepting these gifts and turn them down. But instead of viewing these acts of kindness as charity, what you might try is reframing the way you perceive it. Because in most cases, their generosity stems from a desire to enjoy a certain activity with you. And it might even help to put yourself in your friend's shoes. If money is a little tight for one of your friends and you're in a position to treat them to an experience that you know that you both will enjoy and remember forever, would you do it? Now, if you answered yes, your friend likely feels the same way. And understandably, guilt can sometimes happen in these situations, especially when there's an imbalance in resources. But remember, you can always reciprocate in other meaningful ways. For example, you can show your appreciation by being a supportive and caring friend, you can offer your time, or you can give other assistance. It's also important to set boundaries. And setting boundaries with friends who earn more can be challenging, especially if they don't take no for an answer. Even when you communicate your budget limitations, some friends may persistently push you to participate in expensive activities. However, boundaries are essential because they allow you to define what's acceptable and what's not in terms of your spending. Just remember that the key to setting clear boundaries is to be firm and consistent. Firm in the sense that you're assertive, you don't change your mind, and you don't feel the need to justify your decision. Consistency is important too, because sometimes all it takes is giving in one time for the pressure to start again. But if you stand your ground, they'll get the point and stop pushing. And setting boundaries also involves not feeling guilty over prioritizing your finances and realizing that you might have to cut off people who don't respect or understand your choices. And finally, it also helps to be the host from time to time. When you find yourself in a circle of friends who have more resources, at times you might have to take control of your social calendar and introduce budget-friendly or free activities. And by doing so, you're not only able to manage your money wisely, but you might also contribute to diversifying the experiences that you enjoy together. And as a few examples, you can host a game night where you invite your friends over for an evening of board games, card games, or video games, or you can have a movie night and ask your friends to bring their favorite snacks. You might also organize a dinner where each friend contributes a dish. And from time to time, it's also good to think outside the box and suggest activities that you've never done before, such as exploring a local nature trail or maybe the local culture. And this doesn't mean that you completely stop doing the things that your friends suggest or that you never spend money on fun again, but it can allow you to enjoy each other's company without breaking the bank.